Good morning, Sunday Schoolers. Thank you for joining me for our mid-month check. Let us pray and then we'll get right into it. Dear Lord, thank you so much for this day. Thank you, God, for watching over us. Thank you for keeping us safe. Thank you for bringing us together one more time. Uh, thank you for helping us to be safe, to use sound judgment in our lives, in our daily lives, for ordering our steps and for armoring us and equipping us. Lord, please let the words of our mouth and the meditation of our heart be pleasing and acceptable in your sight. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Good morning. I am... Oh my goodness, I adjusted the volume and then it stopped the actual video. So please forgive me. Okay, so like I was saying, welcome and thank you so much for joining us this morning for our mid-month check where we are discussing prayer for others. So in our Sunday school, we discuss how to pray for others and um, how to get ourselves equipped and armored up. And today we're going to be brief because it is a mid-month check, but I just wanted to give you some pointers on things to um, go into prayer for others, thinking or doing or um, practicing so that you can really get into the groove of praying for others. God has placed us on, uh, on earth with an assignment. Each of us have our own individual unique assignment in life and the way that we grow that assignment is by intensely listening to Christ. Now I know you're probably thinking I barely know how to pray for myself so how do I pray for other people and what I was going to um, go from an angle is for today is that there are certain things that you'll want to um, just keep in mind when you go into prayer at all but let alone when you're going into prayer for other people so if you have a pen and paper I'm gonna give you some time go ahead and get that well you should have that when you come to Sunday school but I'm gonna give you some time just go ahead and get that um, gather your your books and your notebooks and a pen because you want to take down some keynotes and also our scriptures so while you're grabbing that i will go into our announcements on the first sunday of april it is easter sunday and that is my favorite favorite holiday since i was a young girl why because we get to go to church and we get to speak about the uh, resurrection of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ and we get an opportunity in the springtime to see the beautiful colors and things of that nature so it's always been a very good favor uh, a very good uh, Sunday and holiday for me um, particularly because I just love the fact that we get the opportunity to learn and grow more. Uh, you get to see a lot of people at church and and things like that and um, I'm hoping we get to some sort of normalcy like within the next couple of years where we can actually go back and gather. Um, I know some churches have opened where they are um, outside in the front of their church having church or maybe they might be a little more social distance so wherever you attend church i just wish you the best for easter sunday we will have sunday school we definitely will have sunday school it'll probably be a an abbreviated version we will not go into our study i don't believe we won't go into our study just because that is Easter Sunday. We'll, we'll resume any type of studies in the month of May. So now that you should have your notebook and your uh, pen or something to write with, let's go into our prayer for others. So in 1 Thessalonians 5, 17, it says, Never stop praying. Pray without ceasing. And you're thinking, how do I do that if I have a job, if I have obligations, if I have a family, if I have school, if, um, if I'm in my daily walk, how do I keep a prayer in my heart and on my thoughts? That's exactly what you do. You keep a prayer in your heart, on your thoughts. If you're constantly meditating on the things of Christ, meaning 
Um, once you wake up and you start your morning with your good prayer, with your Our Father prayer, with your um, fervent pr prayer for others, once you start um, your day and begin your day in that way, you're fully armored and equipped and impacted to have a prayer on your tongue all day. So you want to make sure that you are um moving in Christ and that you start your day right and God will start to give you things to pray for. You'll drive past a homeless person and your prayer, your simple prayer could be, Lord, please send them some food today. Send them a smile today. Or in that moment, God may actually speak to you and say, you have a dollar. You have an extra dollar. You got change from your snack. Give them that dollar. And move by the prompting of the of the Holy Spirit because those are always great um, opportunities for Him to expand you, and He expands you by you helping, praying, and helping, praying for, and helping others. So, in praying for others, you want to come to God as an empty vessel. There's this song by Milton Bronson, and that's your assignment for this week. Look up Milton Bronson. Um, it's B-R-U-N-S-O-N, Milton Brunson, I am available to you. So it's just, Lord, I am available to you. Um, my will I give to you. I do what you say. Use me, Lord, and show me the way. So it's, um, it's a verse that kind of equips you with with the tools necessary to empty yourself of any thoughts, any preconceived notions, any things that you would go into prayer and say, Lord, I need, I need, I need, Lord, I want, I want, I want. And it makes you available for God to speak to you. And in that, in that same instance, he may speak to you about praying for someone else. So always come as an empty vessel. And sometimes that sounds like five minutes of silence and not knowing what to pray for. Um, going into a study or even Sunday school, not knowing what you're going to uh, speak about. Sometimes that's what it looks like because God wants to get his very best out of you. And he cannot do that with your input. He doesn't need your help, basically. <laughs> So come ready to receive. Clear your mind of all thoughts. Some people um, meditate, like they, they, they focus on their breath, or uh, some people just lay uh, on their face before the Lord and not fall asleep. <laughs> I know God can wake you up at some early times, but they, they just lay on their face willing to receive from Christ. And a lot of the times, that's the one time where you have all the time in the world to think about things that concern your day, that concern what has to be done for you. But you take the time to sacrifice those thoughts and subside those thoughts so that you could give your full attention to what it is that God has you to pray for. So um, the next thing is you don't need the right words. I know that last month we were speaking um, and we ended in Matthew 6 and 7. We have been in Matthew 6 and 7 a few times where it begins, there's an um, intro to the Lord's Prayer. But at the very beginning of that, it says, when you pray, do not babble on as the Gentiles do. They think their prayers are answered merely by repeating their words again and again. Don't be like them, for the Father knows exactly what you need before you even ask Him. So that just means that He's already giving you, He's already going to give you a plan that He has set for you to pray for. He He knows exactly what He needs for you to pray for in what moments. So don't feel that you have to come forth with eloquent speech. I know that in the Bible we have um, certain characters. We have Daniel who um, prayed from the, from the lion's den and prayed specifically with his friends and for his friends and end up delivering a mass amount of people just by the prayers alone in many circumstances that he's been set in. And we have Judah who... Um, 
had renounced the throne, I guess, in, in a sense, like walked away and did his own thing only to come back and be one of the great advocates for Christ. He came from a long lineage where he was basically brothers with Joseph and, um, <clears throat> and relatives of Jesus, um, earth as earth Jesus walked. So Judah had walked away only to come back and contend for the faith in the end. So he was constantly praying for others. You have Esther who um, became a queen in order to free her people. She had to pray. She had to pray without ceasing for other people. So uh, you think, okay, these boisterous characters, great characters of the Bible, and they pray for other people intently and intensely. I don't know what to say. The Lord is telling you in Matthew 6 and 7, don't come with a bunch of words thinking you have to impress me. I'm going to give you what to say. I'll give you what to say. I just need you to first come as an empty vessel ready to be used. So finally, you want to, um, to be aware that God hears the righteous. God has made you right in right standing just for accepting the Lord as your savior. So you accepted the the sacrifice that he has offered. He brought a perfect um blameless and spotless lamb, Jesus Christ, and you accepted that. So as you accepted that, he has made you right or righteous, meaning you are made right in Christ. You are made right in God through Christ. So since you are right um upright in Christ, God has set you in a place where he hears from you. He hears from those who seek him. And so in Psalms 34 and 15, if we want to go there, I've learned to start putting markers on my book because this Bible is huge. It's huge. So in Psalms 35, 15, it says, but they are glad now. Let me make sure I'm in the right place. Psalms 34, 15 says, The eyes of the Lord watch over those who do right. His ears are open to their cries for help. So the Lord hears you. The Lord hears and knows your every desire. And when you come even forward with a pure, clean heart as an empty vessel ready for your words to be used by Christ then he's even more so pleased because he knows that in the midst of whatever trials you may go on through be going through in the midst of need in the midst of lack or want God knows that aside from all of that you're putting all of that aside to be available to the task at hand that he has for you and in essence what he does is he ends up blessing you by you praying for others. So that is our mid-month check for the day. I have not kept you long at all today. Like I said, that I would um, keep it brief. And I kept it brief today because I really want you to take some time, especially for the rest of this month, for this week, for next week, and really put into practice what it looks like to pray for others. So go forth, make sure that you come before him with a, as an empty vessel, with a clear thought, with a clear mind, um, not thinking of anything but ready to be used. Make sure that you're not coming to him feeling as if you have to um, impress him with fancy words, but just being ready to pray for whatever he has placed on your heart for this week. And then also just knowing that you are made right in Christ and that you can do anything and all things through Christ who strengthens you and that he'll equip you with what to say and when to say it. And he is going to expand your territory. So I hope you have a great mid-month. Um, we had a great mid-month check. I hope you have a great week ahead. And I will see you on the 4th of April for Easter Sunday. If you want to, I would say um, put on your Easter clothes. 
put on your Easter clothes. Even if you don't go to an Easter service, if you watch one online, put on your Easter clothes because we're going to be here in Sunday school. We're going to have a great impacted word and I hope you have a great impacted rest of your month and rest of your week. Have a good one.